When we introduced Hardy Weinberg, we said there are five requirements for a population to be in genetic or Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. That means their allele frequency remaining stable. Likewise, if those five things are happening, that would change the allele frequency. So there are five factors that can change the allele frequency. Again, if we know changing the allele frequency is the way that populations evolve, then there are five things that can result into evolution in a population. So the first one is mutation. If the DNA is changing, the, the genes that it's, the DNA is coding for, that will result in a change in the alleles. Gene flow, if alleles are going bringing populations are bringing new alleles or alleles in the population are leaving to another one, that would change the allele frequency. Non-random mating, so non-random mating, either if some individuals with some alleles never get to mate, they're never selected as mates, then their alleles will disappear in the population. Or you can also have non-random mating in which certain alleles um, will bind, will mate only for the, with the same type of alleles so that there will be less heterozygous so that only alleles, alleles with tall gene mate with individuals with tall allele and then individuals with a short allele only mate with individuals with a short allele, you will have fewer heterozygous. Genetic drift is a change in the allele frequency that is due to random events has nothing to do with the allele being good or bad. It's just bad luck that just some alleles disappear. And that's opposite to selection because in selection, one allele makes it more likely to be passed on or the other way, one allele might be less likely to be passed on. Let's look at each one of these possible agents of change. So we have a mutation. This is your change in the genetic code. You're changing, in, in this example, going back to our uh, population of cats, if, for instance, one of the black alleles in the population mutates and becomes inactive, so it can no longer produce color, and as a result, now it has, it, it has become a white allele. Now the population has a different proportion of alleles because if we started with nine individuals that were homozygous black, now one of those has become a heterozygous or their offspring will be a heterozygous so that now the proportion of the alleles has changed. We can also have genetic flows. So like we said, this is when one population has one allele composition. Let's say they have this red allele and this second population has only the blue allele. But if individuals migrate from one population to the other, they'll bring that allele that was not present. So in this deer, you have the light brown deer and they migrate into the dark brown deer, deer population and now they have alleles that were not present in this population before. Bringing it to our cat example, it's like you have your population of cats and four white cats migrate into our population that doubles, well, not actually, but that increases the, the um, per frequency of the white alleles. It doubles the proportion of the homozygous recessive in our population. The other agent of evolutionary change is the non-random mating. So this is either individual self-assort, so that tall mate with tall, short with short, etc. Or it can also be certain phenotypes are preferred over others and those that are prefer will have more offspring than those that don't. So that will change the proportion of alleles in the future. In the case of our cats, if we say the black cats only mate with black cats and the white cats only mate with white cats, over time we will have fewer percentages of heterozygous and uh, the alleles will remain the same. We can also say, let's say that all the cats prefer to mate with the black cats only. So over time, we'll have fewer of the white cats. So either way, it will have it will cause a disruption in Hardy Weinberg either by decreasing the proportion of one allele, or even if it keeps the proportion of the alleles, it will reduce the proportion of the heterozygous. The fourth agent is genetic drift, and as we said, this is 
change in the allele composition due by random events. And there are two types of genetic drift. One is the bottleneck effect. In this case, is when something happens in the population that certain alleles disappear. Like for example, a major earthquake and half of the population dies in that event. It is very unlikely that the population, the individuals that survive have the exact same composition as the individuals that didn't make it. So most likely you will lose some alleles in that event and it's only due to this random event that has nothing to do with the allele being better or worse. And the other po uh, possibility is the founder effect. And this is when a few individuals from a main population go and colonize a new area those individuals that make the trip to the other area will unlikely have the same genetic composition as the main population. So they will have only a few of the alleles present in the mainland and uh, that will change the genetic composition of that new population. And this uh, genetic drift has a very important effect in small populations because um, just losing one individual with a rare allele is enough to throw off the frequencies of the alleles. So, for example, in our cat population, if three cats die, I don't know, they get run over by a car, unfortunately, and they just happen to have the white allele in greater proportion, now the white allele will be more rare in the population than what it used to be. And finally, the last agent of evolutionary change, not surprisingly, is selection. So selection is favoring certain alleles over others. So here is the example of this mice in the lava rocks. If you're living on the lava rocks, it's better to be a dark mouse, and then you can hide in the rocks or camouflage. And if you're brown, you will stand out and you will get predated. But on the other hand, if you're in the sand, then having the light color camouflages you better and protects you from predation, while being dark in the sand patches will make you more likely to be eaten. So here, not only we see how selection is changing the allele frequency, but we're also seeing how that depends on the particular environment. So using our example of the cat population, if it just so happens that the white cats are spot by the predators or maybe by when they're hunting their prey can see them at the distance because they're white and they stand out over time then those individuals will have a harder time finding food and they will have a harder time being able to reproduce as they have less resources they haven't they haven't been able to get food to reproduce so over time you will, they will have fewer offspring and their alleles will become less frequent less frequent in the population before we start talking about selection and what traits are favored, let's take some moment to look at the concept of fitness. So we, we heard the word fitness, and as many terms in biology, this means something very different than what it means in common day language. So in common day language, fitness might be someone who's in good shape, someone who goes to the gym. Um, but in biology, the term fitness means having the set of genes best suited to that environment so that you will produce the highest number of offspring and then your genes will be represented in the next generation and then that next generation will be able to pass on those genes also more frequently so that the proportion of the, your genes in the population will increase generation after generation. That's mean, that means having good fitness in biological terms. And measuring fitness is a difficult thing to measure because you want to see how your genes fare generation after generation. And usually we don't have the luxury of time to look at genes, at the gene frequency throughout multiple generations. So we have to use proxies or um, indicators that the certain individuals will be more likely to pass on their genes generation after generation.